Hi. Last time I did a detailed review of this Hantec 2D72 3-in-1 oscilloscope multimeter and arbitrary waveform generator combo. And I was quite impressed by the features and performance, especially given its price. If you have not watched that video, I would definitely recommend you to check that out first. Now, of course, we wanted to open it up and uh, take a look inside, but before doing so, I wanted to point out that uh, the battery life of this 2D72 is actually very impressive after playing it around for a few days. Although I did not see battery runtime figure published, I think it can probably run for the majority of a day if you leave it on, according to my testing. And it's not something you need to worry about. Another thing I wanted to point out is the placement of the USB port. And uh, of course it's on the side, but uh, it's actually a little bit odd because you can see how deep that port is recessed in back there. And also if you take a look that uh, this device seems to have designed for an SD and USB connector here as well, but it's not implemented. So not entirely sure why that is because this 2D72 is actually the most feature rich version. So I would have expected if it is implemented anywhere, it would be on this device, but uh, it is not here. So I'm not sure what that port is reserved for. Perhaps another product altogether in the future? I don't know. Anyway, time to open it up. So I think before we do further teardown, I'm going to take a look at the battery consumption here and I'm going to power it down. But by the look of it, actually, these two batteries are just uh, putting here in parallel. So we should just be able to take one out and uh, measure the other battery so that we can have a sense of how much current this uh, device draws when we power it up. So I'm going to put my meter here and uh, let's uh, see if we can get a sense at the current consumption here. So for that, I'm going to attempt to power it on while I probe this here. Uh, is it on already? Ah, it's a little bit of hard to do with one hand. So let me try to do that. I press the button. Now it's showing 304 uh, amp. Ah, now it's a uh, hang on. So let me try it again. So I wanted to be able to see whether we're powering it on or not. So let's do it. Ah, uh, uh, everything's falling apart. That's all right. And you can see now is powered on. And we're drawing 370 milliamps, so that's in oscilloscope mode. So if you take a look, each battery is 2.6 amp hour. So in theory, just one battery could last you for about uh, seven hours ish. And so two batteries definitely can last you for a couple of days with no problem. So that's actually very, very good. And uh, here is the backside of the case. You can see that uh, there's nothing special inside. In fact, you can actually remove the battery cover without having to remove the entire back case just via these two screws. But right now the back case is totally off. And also what you can see here is we do have a anti-theft chain you can supposedly put it in. But if you take a look, it's not very sturdy. So not entirely sure how useful that is. And if you take a look at the case here, there's no shielding in the backside at all. And uh, here is a USB port that I mentioned earlier. You can see how far recessed it is. So let's take a look to see if we can take the whole board out so we can have a closer look. And you can see that this uh, design uses uh, two boards, essentially one for display, one for the main board. And uh, let's start taking a look at the display board first. So the LCD panel is actually glued on to this holder here and we can flip it over. Inside here, there is really not too much. 
all it has is a STM32F103, which is a 32-bit Cortex-M3 core MCU, and it has a 128K flash memory on board, and it's fairly beefy for this application. It also has the USB capability, and I suspect that's what they used for the USB. As you can see that, the USB is uh, port is right here, so presumably that's coming out from the STM processor. Underneath the LCD, we can see that there is an unpopulated uh, footprint that is for an SD card. And this position does match up with what we see on the case. Apparently, they designed an SD port, but uh, that it was never populated and uh, is not used in this unit either. On the back of the display board, there is not too much to it. If you take a closer look, you will see that there is an empty footprint, and that footprint seems to be matching that of a ESP2866 wireless module. So not entirely sure whether or not they had at some point some plan for including a wireless version. Certainly, that's not in this series. As I mentioned earlier, the 2D72 is the top of the line for now. So not entirely sure whether or not they have a future product in line that would utilize that footprint. And if we look towards the bottom, it appears there is a DC-DC converter type of uh, circuitry. And if I look it up, this chip is actually an HM4062, which is a lithium iron battery charging circuitry. So that makes sense as we have two batteries on board. And uh, if you look at towards the top here, we have some headers. Those are for your programming headers. There is a piece of a shielding at the back here, but I don't believe there's any circuitry behind here, as this probably just serves as a ground plane to make sure that uh, the LCD circuitry is uh, shielded. And also we have a processor on this end. So probably just some passives and uh, not too much to it. Now let's move on to the main board. Let's first take a look at the front side of this board, and later on we'll flip it over and take a look at the back side. Here towards the bottom you can see these are the jacks for the DMM input. Those are soldered directly onto the board. Those are not my favorite, but uh, for a multi-function device like this, you are not going to use the DMM that often, so this design is a good compromise. And you can see that we have nice isolation slots around the DMM circuitry here. Here is the reverse side of the input jack. As you can see that the input doesn't really have a lot of a protection. And by the look of it, the current range is protected by this poly fuse instead of a regular fuse. As I mentioned in my previous review video, the amp range measurement is not fused. As you can see here, the only thing along the current path is this sense resistor. The silver lining is that the sense resistor is actually not that uh, beefy. So in an overcurrent situation, the most likely scenario is that the sense resistor will be blown and it will fail open. Therefore, the remaining traces would probably be intact. And you can probably see why there is no fuse included, because the trace here is towards the bottom of the board, and by this design, it's really close to everything else, and there's just not enough space to put in a proper fuse. And uh, by the look of it, we do have this uh, single MOF here after these switching relays. Earlier, while I was measuring the current consumption, I mentioned that these two batteries are in parallel. Now, upon closer look, it appears that there's a little bit more to it. So let's uh, take a quick look. And uh, the anode side appears to be connected. So let's just buzz it out. Let me see here. Yeah, indeed. So these two terminals are connected, but uh, the cathode sides are not connected. As you can see here, they are not connected. And if you look carefully towards the negative terminal of each of the battery, you will see a chip, U14 5-pin chip, and also U15 another 5-pin chip. These are connected to the battery negative terminals. So I think what is happening is these must be used as part of the either balancing or charging control so that we can control each individual battery separately. And here is a close-up of the dedicated DMM chip used in this handheld oscilloscope. 
If I tilt it to the right angle, you can probably read that is a CS7721 4000 count DMM chip. The tiny chip up there is just a 595 shift register. And just by the look of it, we know that this DMM section is fully isolated from the remainder of the circuitry, as we can see all these optical couplers here. And we can see the FPGA used in this unit is a Lattice LCM X02 1200HC. So this is actually a relatively beefy FPGA. It has uh, over a thousand, actually 1,280 lookup tables. To the left of this uh, FPGA is an analog device's AD9288. Now, this is a dual 8-bit maximum 100 mega sample per second ADC. Now, if you notice that uh, our oscilloscope has a maximum sampling rate of 250 mega samples per second, so not entirely sure how they implemented that with a 100 megabit per second ADC here. Now, the remaining chips on this board are some logic chips and uh, shift registers like these 595s and uh, MOX. Now, interestingly, this chip here has its markings send it off. So clearly it is some kind of importance. And if you look at it, it's talking directly to the FPGA here. And uh, by the look of it up here, we also have a signal transformer. Not entirely sure what this uh, signal transformer is doing here. And uh, before I flip the board over, I just want to show you the backside of the input section to this two channels of the oscilloscope. And you can see that there's not a whole lot on the backside of the oscilloscope's input sections here. So let's uh, flip it over and take a look at the other side. So now I have flipped over the board and uh, also I have taken out one of the shielding can here. Actually, it's very easy to take it out. It's only clipped in, it's not soldered in. Since both channels are identical, I'm only going to be removing one of these. And let's uh, take a closer look at the first input channel here. I don't see a whole lot in this uh, front end. What we have here is a compensation adjustment capacitor to adjust the flatness of the input signal and a relay to switch between different attenuations. By the look of it, we have a quite a few discrete transistors here. And uh, towards the top, I can see a tiny chip. By the look of it, it's probably an analog device op-amp, although I can't really see the SMD marking. Unfortunately, these two chips are unmarked. And uh, this little chip here does have some SMD marking. I could not find any information, but I will provide the picture here and uh, you can take a look. And let me know if you know what that chip is. The chip up here, this is actually an opto isolator. This little chip you see here is the output current op amp that drives the arbitrary waveform generator. And it is a Renaissance 5166 ISZ 1.4 gigahertz current feedback op amp. And here we have a buzzer. And this is the pulse transformer that I mentioned earlier. And again, we have uh, two relays here for switching the inputs from the DMM here. As uh, this DMM does not have a dedicated range switch, so a lot of the switching is done by these relays. Up here, we have a section of a DC DC converter. That's very obvious. As you can see, we have the plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts, and 3.3 volts rail here. That's pretty much all there is inside this Hantec 2D72. From the teardown, it looks like the build quality is actually quite good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. I will catch up with you next time.